Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. It doesn't happen every day that you get a parcel that long. <laughs> and what is inside is actually an English longbow. Let me explain. A while ago I was contacted by Jason Kingsley from the uh, famous YouTube channel Modern History TV. Link down below. <laughs> and he asked me if I would be interested in a collaboration. Uh, sure, I'm always interested in these things because I believe that this is what makes YouTube so much more interesting, collaboration between different but kind of similar channels. So I said, sure. And uh, I looked at his videos and I found that he made uh, some interesting videos about English longbows. Uh, and uh, that fascinated me because, you know, I'm into bows and I like making magazines for bows, but I've never done this for an English longbow. Well, in any case, he sent me their longbow. And this is it in relaxed condition. But see, it's like probably two meters long. <laughs> so it is a long bow. It's not a war bow though, which is understandable because, see, I'm a slingshot guy. I'm a, I think I'm a passable archer, but I don't have a lot of archery practice. And definitely my form and style isn't great. So I can handle a long bow, but definitely not a heavy war bow. I would probably have to invest some months, maybe years of training to be really proficient with it. But it doesn't matter because if I can do that with a, with a light a longbow, I think a professional archer who has trained all his life with it would have no problem doing that with a heavier bow. In any case, let's cock it. And that is not so hard. I typically just step through with my leg, then bow it a little bit, slip it over into the notch. And the whole thing is ready for action. <laughs> so as you see, there is not a lot of distance between my arm and the string, which is not untypical for these bows, I think. So therefore I will probably need a protector. And since the bow is heavy, but not super heavy, I think I could draw it without uh, gloves, but maybe gloves would come in handy for this one. Okay. Now, while I did have a archery glove with, was for three finger draw from an earlier project. I do not have an arm protector, so I made one from a few rubber bands and cardboard. <laughs> and for arrows, I have like three shorter wooden arrows and also I have some carbon arrows. Uh, let's try to shoot both. So this is the typical three finger draw. And of course, it's a little uncomfortable because um, the veins will actually go over my head. Normal uh, arrows for longbows are fledged with real feathers and those are softer. This is a bit harder, so some people would probably prefer wearing gloves to protect the hands too. Because on a longbow like this, there is no arrow rest. That was a little bit too far to the left. So I just have to get used to it, I think. Since, of course, you have no aiming device. It's all instinctive aiming. That was better. You can also see that there is a lot of Archer's Paradox. Okay. Now the longer carbon fiber arrows. I can also draw this out some longer, this way. Okay. As you see, I'm not doing great, but I'm not a complete loser too. just on the target. <laughs> so it works. It's not a massively powerful bow, but it's reasonable. And as you see, it is possible to hit something, even though I don't have a lot of practice. I can't feel it on the webbing between my uh, index finger and my thumb a bit. So uh, that would probably be a good idea to also wear gloves. Now, of course, the challenge is to build an instant Legolas. In this case, I think it would be an instant Robin Hood magazine for it that allows people to shoot faster than they can normally shoot. So, 
<laughs> is it possible? Of course it is. I actually made one. Let me show you what I came up with. Meet the Instant Robin Hood Archery Magazine. <laughs> Let me show you its features. So as you see, it has the same kind of attachment method. So I could tie it to the bow without any changes on the bow itself, just with a little bit of string. It has six shots, actually it fits seven, but the manufacturer only recommends six uh, bolts in the magazine. I'm using these uh, short bolts for the Cobra R9 or R10, just because um, they have the advantage that they're really inexpensive, they have the right veins, and also they're, I think, perfect weight for the light bow, so that you can get decent arrow speed. Also, the short bolts have the uh, tactical advantage, or is it a strategic advantage? Um, that the enemy cannot shoot them back because they're too short for their bows. And they're stacked up and of course there's a spring-loaded lever, this one here. See? Spring-loaded. That presses down on them. And what happens is that... Use this as a replacement for the string to explain how it works. So the string would normally be here. And when you slide it back, you see that there is this kind of notch here that allows the string to glide under the tip of the bolt and then you push it back like so until in the end you hear a click and this means now the bow is ready to fire and when you release it it pushes out the bolt to the front like so and then the arrow flies off and you can repeat the same action Two clicks, as you see, it must always click two times, which is actually also a replacement for a clicker device. So yeah, it, it gives you a clicker device on a longbow. So one more, click and click. Now the thing repeats. And loading the magazine is super easy. It's done like Winchester or shotgun style. You simply slip it in like so. But if you want, you can also lift this up move it over to the side and then you can in theory also insert like several bolts at a time like so click and you're ready for more action let's tie it on and do some shots with it so and this is the longbow with the magazine attached as you see the string runs very freely in it so there's no chafing this means that the string won't really take any harm from this procedure. I've actually already done a lot of shots and tests and there still is no wear and tear on the string. And um, as you see, um, on a longbow, the magazine itself doesn't really look very bulky because it's actually only as short as the arrows. Okay, so let's do a shot. Click, click. Try to aim and fire. Okay, that was too high. <laughs> it's again, it's all natural aiming. That was better. That was spot on. Bit high. High too. Okay, that was right in the middle of it. And magazine is empty. <laughs> it's so much fun. And this time I didn't use any gloves and also this also serves as a string stopper as you can see it stops the string quite nicely okay draw it out sideways for you so that you can see the action one click and the second click and fire <laughs> once more click click fire okay click come on you have to admit it's super fast and totally reliable one more. <laughs> I should count. Tick. It's such fun. And I think it could probably even have changed history. Now, okay. I think Sir Robin would certainly have loved this. <laughs> Sorry for this amateurish and a bit cheesy wood burning, but I had to try my hand on it. Uh, in any case, of course, now that this has a stock in some way, I guess we could also attach an aiming device. And of course, aiming devices like red dots and so on didn't exist in medieval time, of course not. 
but they had Merlin, the great sorcerer. Maybe Merlin would have invented something. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So we traveled back in time and this is what Merlin came up with. <laughs> Merlin's eye. Let me show you its features. <laughs> Okay, this little wondrous box has several features. First of all, there is magic inside that if I press on this patch of leather here, what happens is that there is a like a finger pointing device that you can use to illuminate things very precisely. See, it does appear here on this tree. So you can use it for aiming, but also Merlin made it possible to adjust it because at the same time, he also invented the screw. <laughs> so, this actually can be mounted to just about any bow that has an instant Robin Hood device on it. And underneath this leather flap, we also have room for another screw. And as you see, this one is adjustable. So we can actually adjust it in height by simply moving the entire thing up and down. So this is the axis and you can adjust it so that you can shoot it in. And also there is this knob that actually also changes the way how this works. So by turning on this knob, I can adjust it sideways and I can adjust it uh, up and down this way. Let's mount it on. Okay, now I have Merlin's magic eye installed. <laughs> and of course I still need to shoot it, shoot it in, but I think it should be about right. Okay. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay, that was it, six shots. <laughs> super, super easy, folks. So, would that have changed history? Well, I don't know, maybe. Uh, although, of course, English longbowmen were really, really fast with their bows. They used to just put them in the ground, the arrows before them, in front of them, and then quickly shoot. And I actually searched the internet in order to find a reference. Someone who has learned the archery business good enough that he would actually be representative. And I actually found one video. There's a guy named Joe Gibbs, who actually I think is really, really a good archer. Uh, actually, I think he even draws uh, bows as heavy as like 210 pounds or something. He has a few videos on the internet that I highly recommend. Links down below as always. <laughs> and he made a video together with Todd's workshop. Uh, link down below. <laughs> and uh, they actually tested how fast a longbow would be in comparison with a normal crossbow, like a windlass equipped crossbow. Uh, therefore, uh, he did six shots with his longbow, and I think it was a 160 pound longbow. And he was super fast. I measured it from the video that he took like 30 seconds to fire all six uh, arrows which is really fast. It's like actually twice as fast as English longbow men were supposed to shoot. Um, but of course he took most of the time, actually on average, I clocked it in my editing system. Uh, he actually took about four seconds to grab the arrow, put it onto the bow until he was ready to draw out. And I can do this a lot, lot faster. So 30 seconds is the comparison. Let's see how fast I can do it. And of course, I also need to be able to hit the target with every shot, just like he did. So six shots are loaded into the instant Robin Hood device. Let's see. <laughs> six shots. <laughs> That was quick, wasn't it? Okay, now we come to three important questions that people will have. First, can it shoot broadheads? Sure, you just screw on broadheads, use the same arrows and shorten them a bit so that their overall length is just about the same. And then you can load them in just as normal. So as you can see, I now have two broadhead arrows in the magazine and let's shoot them. Penetration will of course be a lot better. All right, 
Why don't you put a rear stock on it so that you can press it against your shoulder for more stability so it's easier to aim? Well, it would be easier to aim, that is true. But on the other hand, you should not forget that this would make it very awkward to cock it. Because see, when there is a stock, it prevents your arm to go all the way and grab the string. In order to do that, you must come underneath this, like so, with your shoulder. Otherwise you can't do it. If there's a stock on it, it is in the way, and what you then would you have to do is, you would have to draw it back like so, and then fumble the thing into your chest, and then shoot. And that, of course, would be very, very awkward. I tried it, and it, believe me, it makes no sense to add a rear stock. What you can do is, you can add like a small pistol uh, grip here, that you can hold onto with your, uh, with your pinky. But that's about the only thing you can do. It's also really not needed because you can stabilize it with the thumb here. See? If you, if you cock it out, like so, you can just press your thumb against this butt end here. So it makes it much easier to draw. So, so much more relaxing than just keeping the bow cocked all the way with just your muscle. Okay, I think I don't have the magic eye on, so... Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the same old question again and again. What about exchangeable magazines? Everybody is so in love with that. As I've shown in my last videos, it is fairly simple to come up with the stripper clip for a thing like this. A true magazine would be very bulky because you practically would have to saw it off here and replace the entire thing. Which is of course doable, but does it really make sense to carry these things around with you? I don't really think so. But of course it is imaginable that you would have two sets of bows and then have a helper, an assistant, who would keep reloading one bow and while you shoot the other one. So the uh, trained archer could fire lots of arrows in a uh, continuous stream. Also one bonus question, how does the sideways adjustment work on the Merlin's eye? Well, you have this knob here and this knob in reality is just a screw. And here is the laser pointer that's underneath uh, the box or inside of the box. And there's actually a spring underneath it that presses it up. So as you can see, let me see, when you turn it down, you actually move the rear end of this up and down. And this of course means that the laser pointer is adjusted sideways. So this is uh, how you can adjust the Merlin's eye. So I will now be sending it back to uh, Jason Kingsley together with the Instant Robin Hood magazine, of course. See what he thinks about it. Am I also hoping that he's gonna ask archery experts about them, what they think and if they believe that this could possibly have changed history. And also, I'm outstretching my hand to Mr. Joe Gibbs, that I really admire. <laughs> Because I'm inviting him to send me one of his heavy war bows, anyone he would like, uh, that he's comfortable with and that he would think that this is a uh, viable war bow. Because then I would be making an instant uh, Joe Gibbs for him. <laughs> that would allow him to shoot with a magazine and then see what he thinks about it. So if you happen to be a fan of his, well, maybe you can also comment under one of his videos. I'm going to try to send an email to him anyway. In any case, I hope you like this because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks then. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I can't stop doing it. Bang. <laughs>